every command God gives, He wants us to trust the Holy Spirit to empower us to fulfill it. Are you all here? Stand upon thy feet, man of God. Stand upon thy feet. When that commandment came, when those words were uttered, the Holy Spirit entered. And notice Ezekiel said, and the Holy Spirit entered into me. And he stood me up. When you're standing up by the Holy Ghost, nothing can knock you down. Hallelujah. Between the power of the mind and the power of the spirit, we can walk in perpetual victory. We can have a victory after victory after victory through the power that is available to us in the Holy Ghost. Ephesians chapter 5. Look at verse 14. Don't miss what we are about to read. Paul wrote Ephesians to the church, didn't he? He wrote Ephesians to the believers. Notice he says in verse 14, Wherefore God said, Awake thou that sleepeth. Well, now what do sleeping people do? They lie down. If nobody sleeps standing up, I said nobody, I said nobody goes to sleep on their feet. Try it. I bet you you can't do it. I'll bet you the million dollars I got in my pocket. Uh, listen. Wherefore, he said, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from where? Amen. Now, notice this is a commandment, not a suggestion. Anything God says, he expects us to do. He said, Awake and arise. Awake and arise from the dead. The question is, how do we as Christians arise from death? How do we do it? Read verse 18 as loud as your lungs will allow. One, two, three, read. Now here is how we fulfill the command. Don't be drunk with wine. That's a not. Do not be drunk with wine. Be filled, be filled, be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's how we arise. That's how we stand. We must let the Holy Ghost enter into us anew. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Do you know? Why you're not standing anymore. Because you're not spirit filled. You've been trying to live this life. In your own. Excuse the truth. In your own. Pathetic. Strength. And we've all discovered. We can't. How do I get off my back? How do I get back on my feet? Your Bible says, be filled. Be filled. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Notice in every connection, 
when it comes to standing up. The Bible says be filled. Let the Holy Ghost enter into you. Glory to God. Notice Romans chapter 1, please. How do I say this? How do I explain this? How come I'm standing after all these years of serving God? When I got saved at 17, I got saved in a church that made sure I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I got saved in a church who prophesied into the atmosphere. People, be filled. Believer, be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And they didn't quit until we were. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Notice, please, Romans 1. And look at verse 4, please. Oh, are you all ready to shout some more? Hallelujah. Notice it says, And declared, Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power. He was declared to be a Son of God. The son of God. But we're also sons of God. Your Bible says there's many, this same book, Romans. In chapter 8, as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. But now notice, please. And declared to be the son of God with power. According to the spirit. According to the Holy Spirit of holiness. By the resurrection from what? Dead. Notice the Bible tells us to arise from the dead. Well, Jesus had to arise from the dead. How did Jesus get back up on his feet? The Bible says by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. He was able to rise up from the dead. From the dead. Well, that's the same way you and I got to get up from the dead. God told you and I, hey, arise from the dead. How? Be filled with the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost that got Jesus up from the dead. The Bible says it was the power of the Holy Spirit. Now let me tell you something. Please listen. There's a power that causes death. The Bible says death is by sin. Romans 5 says that death came by sin. There's a power that causes death. That power is called sin. But we have a greater power to break the power of sin. And death, that power is the power of the Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen? Amen. See, if you let this other power rule your life, you will be down. You will be kicked. And all the fluff and flamor and glamour of your exterior means nothing. Because all of us on the inside are human. And we know the real story. See, before I got real, I faked it. But after I came into God, no need to pretend. I'm as genuine as genuine can be. What you see is what you get. I stand by the power of God. Can I get an amen? amen. The Bible says Jesus got up from the dead. Your Bible says very clearly. By the power of the Holy Ghost. So must we, Christians in the church, so must we obey the command of God to rise from the dead by the same Spirit that raised up Christ. 
we must be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let me hurry up. Notice Revelation chapter 1 and look at verse 4. Revelation chapter 1 and look at verse 4. Uh, chapter 4, I'm sorry. Look at chapter 4 and verse 4. Revelation chapter 4 and verse 4. And verse 1. I had it all reversed. I got it now. Notice chapter 4. Look at verse 1. When you have it, say amen. amen. Notice what it says. John said, after this I looked. After this I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Now that's a wonderful thing. When God opens a door, he wants you to be able to walk through it. But where was this door opened at? Where was John at at the time? He was on earth. He was physically on earth. But he saw a door. In other words, how can I get in the heavenly realms without the Spirit? Now look at this verse. Please study it. After this I looked, John said, and behold... A door was opened in, in, in heaven. And the first voice that I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. And the voice said, come up here, come up here, come up here. Now how can John fulfill that command in his own strength? I got news for you. We've all been summoned to come up in heavenly places. We've all been called by God to walk in the heavenly realms. But the question becomes, how do we get there? How I, I know you opened it for me, but, 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 but in my strength, I can't do it. Notice what happens, please, after the command came. Look at the next verse. And immediately, I was where? Oh, God, how many people want to come up? Yeah. Well, you got to get in the spirit. Yeah. Woo! I say, how many people want to move from where you are to where you know you need to be? You got to get in the spirit. Yeah. And immediately I was in, in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set where? And immediately I was in heaven where I was commanded to be. Immediately by the Holy Ghost, I was lifted up. I was raised up. I was able to come up. It's by the Holy Ghost. You got to get sick and tired of being down. Sick and tired of struggling in yourself sick and tired of you trying and you know you're going to fail 105 times because you've already failed 104 times it's time to get in the spirit when he lifts you up you stay up hallelujah Notice chapter 11, please. Glory to God. John could not have obeyed the command to come up in his own human power. Would you agree to that? He could not have obeyed God's command in his own human power. The commandment he received to rise up could only be fulfilled by John through the power of the Holy Spirit. There was no other way. Notice chapter 11 and look at verse 8. Now this story speaks of two of God's end time prophets. Two of God's end time men of God. Look at verse 8. And their bodies and their dead bodies shall lie in the street. Notice these two men of God are going to die. They're going to be killed. And their dead bodies do what? Lying. See, they're lying because they're dead. See, they can't stand up on their feet. They're dead. Well, see, there are many Christians dead. 
So they really can't stand upon their spiritual feet. They're dead. These two mighty prophets of God are killed. And your Bible says, and their dead bodies lie in the street. But look at verse 11. And after three and a half days, whoo, read it for a shout, read it. After three and a half days, the Holy Ghost came into them. Whoa, if you want to get up, you got to let the Holy Ghost come into you. And the spirit of life came from God into them. And they stood upon what? Now, how many more verses should we read? It's the Holy Spirit that helps us to take our feet. To get us out of groveling in the dust. So we could fulfill our destiny. So we can walk in God's calling. It takes the Holy Ghost to raise us up and make us stand. Are y'all still here? The Holy Spirit entered into them. And notice, by the power of the Holy Ghost, they stood upon their feet. Were they able to raise themselves up? It took Holy Ghost power. When Christians are asleep and dead, can they shake themselves and rise up? No. It takes Holy Ghost power. Now notice what your Bible says. Look at the next verse. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up here. And they did what? And they ascended up. And listen, see, could they have obeyed that command without the Holy Ghost? Before God told them to come up, he first put his spirit on the inside of them. He not only raised them from the dead, he raised them from the earth. He not only raised them from the dead, he raised them from the earth by the power of the Holy Ghost. But notice he put his spirit in them. Notice he put his spirit in them. Notice he put his spirit in them. Have you let God fill you? Oh, don't look at me like a you know, like a cow. Have you let God fill you? It breaks my heart. Because I know you could preach these things till you're blue in the face and folks will not give any effort. I wonder why some people come to a church like this. I, it puzzles me. Well, you don't try. To help yourself. Why bother? Watch it on TV and call yourself a Christian. Just play the game. But some of us not only want to rise up in this life, we want to arise to heaven one day. We are serious about God. God and about eternity and we want the spirit of God amen. amen now notice if you will Revelation 2 and look at verse 1 let's look at another episode another episode another glorious truth hallelujah a work of the spirit is to raise us up glory to God hallelujah Notice, if you will, please. Notice Revelation 2. Look at verse, verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write. Now, we're talking about a church here, right? What's the name of this church? It's the Ephesian church. You're right. It's the Ephesus church, the Ephesian church. Notice what God says. Look at verse 5. Here is what... 
had to be written to this church. Remember, therefore, from where thou art what? Notice any church, any believer can fall. But notice Jesus says, remember from where you fell from. Remember from where you fell from. It is ever God's will for a believer to fall. Because it's not his will, Jesus gave this church advice as to how to get back up again. So just remember from where you fall, repent and do what? Do what? Now listen, that is Jesus' remedy to the fallen state of this church. You got to remember from where you're fallen and get back to that place you had arisen to before you fell. Remember from where you've fallen. Repent. That means to turn around and get back to your first works. Now that's Jesus' remedy to a fallen condition. Now this doesn't mean anything if we don't know what their first works were. So to know what their first works were, we got to go to the book of Acts and see what happened to the Ephesus or Ephesian church at the beginning. He says, you get back to how it was at the beginning. Remember how, you know what they did at, at the beginning? They got filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, you get back there, you won't fall. He said, you get back to Holy Ghost living and you won't be fallen. Notice Ephesians, please, chapter 19. I'm sorry, Acts. Acts chapter 19. Jesus' remedy to their fallen state was to go back to do what you did at the beginning. Well, we got to see what they did at the beginning to understand Jesus' cure to their fallen condition. Are you all still with me? So let's see what they did at the beginning. Notice, please, chapter 19. Uh, yeah, and look at verse 1. Verse 1 simply says, Paul came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He found certain disciples. This is Ephesus, right? This is the same church that had fallen, right? Notice what Paul says. Look at verse 2. He said unto them, the disciples, the believers at Ephesus, he says unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Well, that's how they started in Holy Ghost. After they got saved, a man of God came along and said, Listen, after you've been born again, after you accepted Jesus Christ, have you received the Holy Ghost? Notice what happens. And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Well, you see, that's where a lot of sad Christians are today. Our church don't teach that. Well, shame on you. We have not even heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Look at verse 6. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them. Them who? The Ephesian Christians who were disciples. When Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost came on them. The Holy Ghost came on them. The Holy Ghost came over them. And what did they do? You tell me. Now that's how they started. That was the beginning of this church. Jesus says you've fallen because you left that. He said remember where you fell from. Repent. Turn around. And go back and do that again. He says this will cure your fallen condition. Get back to being spirit-filled. 
Get back to those times when the Holy Ghost come upon you. Get back to those days where you spend hours speaking in the Holy Ghost. Prophesying. God is wonderful. God is awesome. God is powerful. To God be the glory. Get back to those days where you used to have a shouting fit. Get back to those days where the Holy Ghost would fill your services. Get back back there he said and your fallen condition will be cured are y'all still here well hallelujah Jesus told us how to get up from a fall nobody has to stay down you see but always the cure to arising it's the spirit of God what is it yeah. Okay, let's just read on a, a little bit quicker. Notice Ephesians chapter 6. This same church, Church of Ephesus. Notice Ephesians, please, chapter 6. Yes, this same church. Chapter 6. And look at verse 10. Are y'all seeing any of this? God, let this be preached throughout the church, throughout the world. We need help to fulfill purpose, assignment, callings, and ministries. We need the Holy Ghost to stand us on our feet so we can walk straight. Listen, after he stands us up, after we arise by his power, then he says, now you walk in the earth for me. You walk in the earth by my power. You walk in the earth by the Holy Ghost within you. Hallelujah. Notice, look at uh, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong. Where? Not in your own strength. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of whose might. Now, what strength and power is this? It's Holy Ghost strength and power. What he's basically saying, this is my final word. See, listen, this was Paul's final word to this church. Then we pick it up in Revelation and they did not obey it. His final word was flowing the Holy Ghost. Let me show you. Now, if you be strong in the power of God's might, look at verse 14. Read it, please. Say it again. No, therefore you can stand. See, by the power of, of the, but, but by revelation, uh, they had fallen. Paul taught them how to stand, but by revelation, they had fallen. And then the same advice Paul gave them earlier, Jesus comes and gives them the same advice. How do you stand, therefore? Look at verse 18, please. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. How? That's how you remain standing. You're praying the Holy Ghost. You're praying the Holy Ghost. Now, this is how this church came into Christianity. This was Paul's last words to them before he left the earth. Now, by revelation, they had fallen because they didn't obey Paul's command. And Jesus came around and gave them the very same command. Get back to the Holy Ghost. Thank you for watching Victory for Today. To request your copy of today's broadcast on CD or DVD, call 407-296-7131 or email us at victoryfortoday at aol.com. Until next time, remember, only through the cross of Christ, there's hope for tomorrow and victory for today.